so if you look at the traditional uh, web architecture uh, the traditional web architecture uh, most people are aware that you know the architecture is typically a client server architecture where a client which is uh, say a web browser makes a request to a server somewhere in the internet the server processes that request maybe it will connect to the database to fetch some data or it may connect to some uh, public cloud or private cloud to do some processing get some data in either case you know the server is the first point of contact for this communication then the server will get all the relevant stuff and give the response back to the client so this is a traditional you know web architecture client server architecture so the devices which are web browsers your smartphone apps they are the clients and uh, what you see on the right side that is the server side end of things so in this architecture uh, you know to develop a complete web app it's not sufficient for you to develop the front end which is this part which is sitting uh, let's say you have developed a web app or a mobile app which you know through play store you install it so it's not sufficient to develop that part of the system you also need to develop something on the server side because the data is residing on the so uh, behind the server or the server may need to do some processing or it may offload processing to the cloud so you need as a developer or as a team you have to do both sides of the uh, system this can be a problem for people who don't like backend like they want to develop a cool Uh, mobile application either for iOS or for Android, but to do that they have to rely on data. And once they have to rely on data, you know they have to mess with the server side uh, server side uh, aspect of the system. So they typically don't want to do that. They want to focus on building their application, building their business logic on this side of things. So this is where Firebase uh, comes into picture. in fact firebase was developed as a back end as a service in other words you focus on your developing the client side of your app don't worry anything about what happens in the back end firebase will take care of it so that is the underlying uh, you know idea with which firebase was created so probably it was created you know in the late uh, 2000 in that decade but google acquired firebase in 2014 and after google acquired firebase now firebase is a very important part of the google uh, ecosystem of products and now firebase is deeply integrated into the google uh, cloud platform as well so a lot of things that happen typically in the cloud they are now available through the firebase ecosystem so for example if you want to do some computation in the google cloud you can do it through your firebase app so that is the kind of integration google has now uh, enabled between firebase and its uh, cloud infrastructure so this is where you know uh, developers tend to benefit they don't need to focus so much on the back end back end is still required for their app but they can focus more on you know uh, the user experience within their app be it a web app or a mobile app they can focus on that and all the back end stuff Uh, you know the you, you can say the uh, there is code running on firebase but it's a uh, lot easier for the developers to do this bit than develop code on this sort of an architecture so that is where we are coming from uh, with firebase so now you may ask uh, you know uh, what are the different services offered by firebase there are quite a number of them you uh, so, so this is a uh, probably not a exhaustive list but uh, you know it covers most of the things offered by firebase for development it has database authentication cloud messaging storage hosting configuration crash analytics which is very important suppose your mobile app crashes you would like to know exactly where it crashed so firebase provides you with that kind of uh, uh, logging and debugging support so that is what is uh, crash reporting or crash analytics they call it then some sort of testing how to promote uh, you know you have notifications uh, app indexing invites ads and so forth so for today's demo i mean uh, today's session is less of a talk and more of a demo we will be actually building a firebase app so two things which we will be doing or we will be using from the firebase uh, 
three tough features is real time database and uh, hosting these two things are essential for our uh, web app so we will be uh, you know making use of these three, two things we'll also be using google an analytics but uh, we, are, we are not going to spend much time on that that is fairly easy to do actually here there is a icon for analytics so in our app we will also enable google analytics but we are not going to if there is time we will look at the dashboard but it's not going to help us much at this point okay now you may ask okay uh, i have moved from a traditional architecture to a firebase architecture but let's say there are some things which firebase can't do so does it mean that i need still need my own server so in fact uh, it all depends what kind of app you are building so there are different uh, modes of deployment you can deploy your app like this which is firebase only suppose your app is a really simple app it doesn't require a lot of back end processing you can deploy it like this you have firebase and then all your client side is your apps so it's as simple as this but there are alternative deployments for example firebase in this case sits between the clients and your own server side port so now your clients always interact through firebase but there are some processing which firebase is unable to handle for whatever reason firebase is unable to handle so you can augment the firebase ecosystem by having your own server so now you may ask if i am having my own server what is the use of firebase why don't i simply deploy everything on my own server the reason is uh, you know sometimes your app is in transition maybe you have developed your app on your own server now you are in the process of migrating to firebase so that is one possibility the other possibility is that uh, uh, you know firebase is not just giving you storage space it's got database it's got analytics it it's got a whole lot of stuff which makes it easier for you to develop uh, everything a lot of things on firebase maybe there is some uh, really special case which firebase is not able to do or maybe firebase is able to do it but it's very expensive to do it on firebase so for that single specific feature you may want to do it on your own server then there is an alternative deployment mode where you know your clients can talk to firebase or to the server so they are able to talk you know directly to either of these so some parts of your app are served by firebase some parts of your app are served by your own server so this is distinct from this case where everything goes through firebase firebase is your intermediary and the server is really on the back end of things but in this case you know your server is on a equal uh access level compared to firebase so your apps or your clients can access both of these directly so these are the three different uh, ways of uh, you know deploying firebase uh, that people have written about there could be other deployment modes uh, which are variations of these so there has been quite a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, there is of course quite a lot more to talk about uh, when we uh, look at firebase but we are not going to talk uh, about firebase in detail uh, important thing to note is people have this question is it only for developing uh, mobile apps so uh, it's for both you can do, uh, use firebase for mobile apps as well as for web apps and when we start creating an, our app we will see what are the options uh, that uh, firebase provides so here i'll give a brief pause so any questions uh, we can take those questions so next up we will go to creating our own app any questions at this point okay if not uh, let's uh, get into creating a uh, uh, default app so there is a github project which i have created i will be sharing the repo to you later uh, so it's a step by step guide but uh, to tell you the truth even if you have little to no knowledge of building web apps if you follow the steps it's pretty easy to create a project in firebase so there are two ways to do it either you can do it uh, from the web console that is through your web browser or you can do it through the command line 
So we'll start with the web console, uh, which will be uh, a, sim a simple starting point, point for beginners. So one of the uh, prerequisite is you should have a uh, account with Google. Typically, if you have a Gmail login, that should suffice. Then you can access the Firebase console page. So I'm opening up the console page. And this is what you would see. So can you confirm you are able to see the screen? This is what you, you have here. Yes, we can see the screen. So as you can see, there are already three projects. Engineers Day 2021 Hello World Demo. So uh, these are some example projects I created earlier and uh, this one I created this uh, afternoon just to test out whether it works properly for this uh, today's demo. So we are going to go through this process. So let's start by adding a project. So let's start with a name for your project. So uh, let me call it demo 2 because already we have a demo 1. So let's give it a name demo 2. And you can see here, uh, you know, Firebase creates a unique identifier. It takes your project name and to that it appends some sort of a suffix, which makes it uh, probably unique uh, within the Firebase ecosystem. You can change this identifier if you want, but it's not important for us now. So we'll continue. Next screen, it asks whether you want to enable Google Analytics for your Firebase pro project. So this is really up to you. You can disable it if you want. So now for, for this demo purpose, it doesn't matter to us. We'll leave it with the default. Continue. Now it says uh, choose or create a Google Analytics account. Because we have selected in the previous screen, Google Analytics, it is asking you what you want to do. So I will say I will use my default account. That is my personal account. Then the next thing is, Within this account, I need a property for Google Analytics. So here you can uh, tell Firebase to automatically create a new property and attach that property with this account. So remember, these steps are not required if you didn't select the Google Analytics option, but I, I just wanted to make this complete. So we selected that option. Now I'm connecting it to my Google Analytics account and I'm asked telling Firebase or Google Analytics to create a new property for this account. And that property will be attached to our project, our Firebase project. So now we are creating the app. So app is under creation. Uh, it takes less than a minute. We'll see later exactly how, uh, I mean, uh, this is also in, uh, possible through the command line interface. So we'll uh, get to that later. So project is ready, it says, so continue. So the console refreshes and it takes you to the demo page. Now uh, this is only the project. This is the Firebase project. To this project, we have to attach apps. You have to add an app. And here, this is where you know Firebase prompts you. What kind of an app do you want to create? Do you want to create an iOS app, an Android app, a web app, or a gaming app? So for gaming, they have provided a Unity as the engine. So these are the four options that Firebase uh, provides right now. So uh, you know, actually, Firebase is popular, I believe, with the mobile app developers because they can focus on their Android uh, user experience or iOS user experience, and they can uh, you know offload all the backend processing to Firebase. Even for web apps, it can uh, be useful because you know these days a lot of apps are single page apps, where a lot of processing is done on the client side. So not much needs to be done on the server side except fetching the data. So that is where again Firebase can help because anyway you are doing all your processing within React or Angular. So you are not doing relying so much on backend processing, let's say in Django or PHP, those kind of technologies. So since the processing is done mostly on the client side, for backend simply for managing data, for managing user authentication, analytics, crash analytics, uh, ad management, you can uh, leverage uh, Firebase. So mobile developers, they can focus on building the core part of their app, 
the UI user experience and all the other necessary stuff, they can leave it to Firebase on the backend. So today we are going to create a web app. So we click this and it says give a nickname for your app. So we'll go with the same name demo2. Now the important thing is remember I told you when we started the pro, uh, in the early part of the session that we'll be using hosting as well. So the thing about web app is you need hosting because uh, see the what is the difference between a mobile uh, one difference between mobile app and a web app in mobile all the assets can be packaged as part of the mobile app in web app that is not the case everything has to be fetched from a server from somewhere on the server side of things so in the case of mobile app you download the app from the play store but after that you know it's uh, you can do uh, everything through just uh, exchanging data so that is where you know mobile apps are different from web apps so for web apps, you need Firebase hosting, which is kind of not necessary for mobile apps. So in our case, because it's a web app, this prompt is coming. Also set up Firebase hosting for this app. So let's click this and automatically Firebase is going to create this uh, hosting uh, space for us within the Firebase ecosystem. Exactly where this happens is transparent to the user or to the developer. Maybe it is uh, going to be in the Google Cloud uh, as uh, one particular VM or it may be shared with other projects, other apps within a single VM. So those details are not uh, known to us and frankly at this point we don't care. So we register our app. So it doesn't take long to register this app. Uh, along with creating the hosting. Then the next part is, uh, you know, now uh, it says you have to, so let's say now I have initialized Firebase uh, with, within the Firebase ecosystem. Now I can start creating my app. So obviously I will have an index.html or index.js. I will have some CSS files. I will have some error page file and so on. But in any case, if I need to connect to Firebase on the server infrastructure, I need to install the Firebase SDK. OK, so this is the code that you know Firebase gives us. You can copy this code and paste it. But later on, I found I so in the first round of things when I was developing a Firebase app, I did exactly this. But later I figured that this is actually redundant because when you do it through command line, anyway, you will get all these things through, through the command line tools. So we are going to skip this. The next bit is installing the Firebase CLI on your local system. So this is something we don't need to do uh, because already in my system I have installed Firebase. So typically you take a Node.js command prompt which I already have here. So one thing you need to go beyond this point is you need to install on your side Node as well as obviously npm which is a node package manager so once you install these things you can install the firebase install firebase tools probably you can also install you need to also install firebase which we saw in the previous step so this we don't need to do it because already i have it installed on my system but if you are doing it for the first time in your node.js environment you would have to run this command so let's move on the next part is now that you got your command line tools installed on your local system, you have to log into Firebase. So I will type the command Firebase login. In my case, nothing will happen because I am already logged into Firebase. So you can see this message already logged in as then it shows my email address. But if you are a, if you are new to Firebase, then it will prompt you what is the email address? What is the password? and then it will uh, authenticate and log you into Firebase. OK. Next up, we initialize the Firebase project. So this is the part where you install Fire in, in, uh, so We'll create a folder. Uh, let's call it demo2. And then we go into the folder. And this is where we will install Firebase, rather init Firebase. So we are initializing the project. So it asks, are you ready to proceed? Yes. Now it is prompting us, what are the things you want to install? So I want to install three things. Fire real-time database, excuse me, real-time database. So to select this, 
I will press space, space to select. Then I will use the arrow key to go down. Firestore we don't need. Functions we don't need. Hosting we need hosting. Okay, and uh, so I will press star. What else do I need? One more hosting is there. Set up GitHub uh, actions deploys. Uh, so it could be useful, but uh, today we don't need it. Storage we don't need. Emulators we need. So what is the purpose of an em emulator? So the purpose of emulator is before you deploy it to the live server uh, within the Google infrastructure, you want to check whether your app is working correctly. So the way to check it is locally enable these emulators. And this will help you to check your app locally before you deploy to the uh, Firebase infrastructure. So we want emulators as well. So having selected these three, we press enter. And you can check here real time database hosting emulators. All three are enabled. Now this is the interesting option here. Uh, so now it asks you what how do you want to select, uh, create your project? Use an existing project, create a new project and it uh, gives two more options. So in our case, remember we can create a new project here, but we have already created a project through the GUI. So we did just uh, just now a little while back, we created demo two. So we are going to use that existing project. Now uh, Firebase will give us options. What are all the projects that I have in my account? So what do I have? I have demo one, demo two, engineers day, hello world. So we are going to go with demo two, which we just created. So select that. So it is setting up uh, whatever is required for this uh, project. So we ha have a real time database. We have hosting. These are the two essential things. And we are also installing the emulators. So now it is prompting us. It seems like you haven't initialized real time database in your project yet. Do you want to set it up? Yes. So the capital Y means this is the current selection default. So we'll go with yes. Please choose the lo location for your real time database. So it gives us three locations, US, Europe and Asia. So let's go with Asia. So the database will actually be in Singapore. So that is the current location of this Asia Southeast one. So enter. So creating your default real time database instance. So it's done. What file should be using for database security rules? So this is the default file name. So we'll go with the default. So we don't need to type, just press enter. What do you want to use as your public directory? So in your project, there will be some files for managing the repository or managing the project, but that is not going to be deployed to the Google infrastructure. What is going to be deployed is what is in a specific folder, which is the kind of uh, files which will be required by your client, your web app client. So it is asking what name do you want to give to that folder? So the default is public. Now, do you want to configure this as a single page app? So if you are using uh, Vue or React or you know one of those uh, SPA kind of frameworks that enable SPA, probably you want to say yes. But in this case, we say no because we are going to have an index.html page. So we will not treat our app as a single page app. So we say no. Set up automatic builds and deploys with GitHub. No, we will do it manually. Now it's asking a question about emulators. So what are the emulators you need to enable you want to enable for this project? So what do I need? I am not going to do authentication for now. Functions we will come to that later. Firestore we don't need because instead of Firestore, see Firestore is a different type of uh, storage. Instead of Firestore, we are using real time database. So this simulate emulator we need. We need a hosting emulator. PubSub we don't need storage. We don't need. So all we need is database emulator and hosting emulator. So having selected these two, we press enter. Now it's asking which port do you want to use for the database emulator? So it is giving some default port. So we'll go with the defaults. 9000. What about uh, sorry that was for database for hosting. It is 5000. Would you like to enable the emulator UI? Yes and no. So yes, that is the default. Which port do you want to use for the emulator UI? Leave empty to use any available port. So okay. 
would you like to download the emulators now so you can select yes but uh, we'll go with no but in my case uh, probably the emulators are already downloaded because i am not doing this for the first time so done uh, you know the firebase installation is complete and now let's look at the directory of demo2 so what do we have it's created this file database rules firebase.json which is the configuration file public directory then some uh, management files so let's take a look at this and see uh, you know what sort of files these are so we'll open this folder so i have created this in i think in documents demo2 so this is what we have here so let's look at the configuration file first uh, it looks uh, it's not too big very small so it says the database rules are in this particular file which we see here hosting should be from the public folder and this is the public folder what else do we have and it says what are the files to be ignored suppose you have uh, you know node installed so node modules ignore ignore the firebase.json file because this is our configuration file so we don't want this to be uh, deployed so some files that you need to ignore for your project it is given here and uh, all those hidden files dot dot git ignore dot firebase rc so those things also need not be deployed so they are given shown here some configuration for the emulators the basic configuration is what port to use so we selected all the default ports if you remember so that configuration is given here so easy to understand what are the database rules simple rules uh, uh, it says uh, read is false write is false that means we are restricting full access to the database so our app can't do much with these kind of rules that means reading is also not allowed writing is also not allowed but we'll change these rules later on what about the public folder here we have index.html what else we have we have the 404 page 404.html so these are the two things that we have so if the page is not found this is the page that will be served so now how does this look uh, you know uh, so for this let's go to our emulator we are going to start our emulator so for that the command is firebase emulators start so remember we had two emulators one for database and one for hosting uh, so both are started the hosting is at local host 5000 database it is is at 9000 but if you want to view the database in the emulator you have to go to this port so let's go to uh, local host 5000 this is what we are interested in right now so local host 5000 enter so you can see here you know firebase is loaded firebase hosting setup complete open hosting now the page is not fully loaded it is doing something so firebase sdk is still loading that means it is getting in touch with the firebase server and trying to load the sdk so for some reason you know my internet is probably slow that is why it is taking time to load the sdk otherwise normally it is uh, pretty fast so let's just uh, yeah this is uh, too slow that is uh, it has to do with my internet connection probably so error loading uh, firebase sdk check the console it says we can also look at the cli whether any uh, output is coming here so we don't see any output here but you could look at the debug files so what is happening uh, we'll close this enter error loading firebase sdk check the console so we can check the console and see if there is any error firebase is not defined 69 okay uh, i am not sure what this error is all about uh, so i am just suspecting it could be that uh, you know i have another server running 
so that might be interfering with this so let's stop this uh, typic uh, typical server that comes with windows that may or may not be the reason so i just wanted to try it out so that is uh, probably not the reason but there is an error here so at this point i will pause any questions you can ask so this is how we did it so let's forget the emulator and now uh, we have at least tested how it works on the emulator let's now deploy this app to the live server in production some yeah let's refresh this again check the console okay same error is appearing so anyway now see our previous command was firebase emulator start so we checked the app on the local uh, server now we want to deploy it so the command for deploying is firebase deploy so this is the name of the app setting up the database number of files found deploy complete okay found two files in public and so forth okay so deploy complete now at the end it gives a hosting url this is the url it gives so now let's see let's go to this particular url and see what happens yeah so there is definitely an error so the error that we saw in the local system that same error is appearing here so obviously something has gone wrong uh, during the install although i followed exactly the same steps i did for the other apps that you see in the console so if you remember i had a few things here so i had other apps here demo 2 and this one this one so all uh, so none of these gave that kind of an error but in this particular case there is an error we will not worry about it uh, we will uh, consider this as a uh, unusual case but uh, yeah i will pause for questions here to see if so far you have followed what is happening so basically we have managed to deploy the app we tested the app locally then deployed it to the live system here there is a failure but we will not worry about this we will go to a working app and show you what happens so now for questions so are you, are you able to follow so far yes okay so now the uh, you may be uh, asking uh, what is the app that we are going to build uh, so this is a very simple app uh, we can also do a uh, one thing we can do is just change the default so in this particular app you know it is loading the sdk and all that but of course the loading failed for some reason so we'll not worry about that now but what i want to do is instead of welcome here i will say hello world okay i am doing a very simple change and i am going to deploy it so notice what happens notice carefully the message here i changed only one file now it found two files in the public folder but it is deploying only one because firebase is smart enough to figure out that although you know two files are to be deployed only one of them has changed so it is deploying incrementally so now let's go to our live app and then refresh so you can see this has changed to hello world okay now you may be asking okay i have my app but i don't want this kind of a url this is a weird url right how do i overcome that so that is easy to do i have here a screenshot by the way this particular uh, app here that you see 
so for this uh, series of tech talks uh, for engineers day all of you re registered through this app through this web page so this is actually built using firebase what is happening in the back end is all firebase stuff and we are going to look at this particular code for the rest of the session so now here i am using a very uh, custom url which is engineersday2021.devopedia.org so this is easily done by going to your uh, control panel so suppose you are hosting your own website so your hosting provider will be, provide you with a control panel so there you create a type a record and then you give your subdomain and then you give the ip address of your server i have masked it out here and then you give some default parameters ttl and save it so in my case i have to give two ip addresses and then any request going to so you can do the similar thing for this guy here right so any request going to uh, uh, going to this particular will get re redirected to firebase so that is what is happening so you can enable custom urls so that you have to configure within your hosting provider is it clear yes now uh, when you do this configuration you will not see the change immediately so firebase uh, the dns has to propagate and firebase claims it may take up to 24 hours but when i first did it for engineers day uh, for this particular url Uh, uh the redirection happened within 2 hours i don't i didn't measure it exactly but when i checked after 2 hours uh, you know the redirection was happening correctly and once that is through then you are ready to publish this page to your community or to your users so this is where we are at uh, now let's look at uh, so if there are uh, any questions we'll pause if not we'll go to the other projects so there are other projects here so we'll go and look at this particular project and look at the code for that so how are we doing on time we have another 20 minutes so i think that should be sufficient okay so now uh, let's go to the code uh, so we don't need this project i will close this project so we created this project just for uh, just to show how to create a project and initialize a project so we'll close this we'll open uh, engineers day project yes and within engineers day project this is uh, so you can you have you will have access to this repo later on and uh, this project has two uh, branches one is dynamic client and one is main so i will explain this later first we are going to look at dynamic client and that is what is actually deployed on the live app as well this is the code that is deployed so hello world we have already seen this so we are going to check out this particular piece of code which is version 0.4.0 so the way to check out in git is simply like this so now we have switched to that particular tag and equivalently the code here will change okay so let's look at the structure of this code here there is a index.html let's open this index.html and you will see here what you see on the live site so we we have an introduction to uh, you know engineers day what uh, and then we have this section on how to register which is nothing but a simple html form then we have the schedule which is a big table and all the data is hard coded as you can see here title of the talk who is the author or speaker rather then a description of the talk so now all the talks are hard coded here we are not using the database the whole content is very much static but what we have done is we have made the code a little bit modular so previously when firebase gave us the de default template all the sdk was installed actually sdk is up here 
right uh, some setup is happening here and inside main the sdk is initialized here so here you know firebase provides you this template so you can enable any of this if you are using that particular thing in your app so many of these things we are not using like authentication is we are not using firestore we are not using so we all of this are commented what we are using is analytics we are using the analytics part and uh, we are using of course database which is here we are using the firebase database what else are we using hosting but uh, there is nothing to be done for hosting here and this is where we create the firebase app like we instantiate the app here but before this the you know the sdks are loaded okay so this is what we have uh, we have made it a little bit modular and uh, also a case in point all the styling we have separated out into a separate uh, css file we added a dot icon file and that is nothing but you know here we want this icon to appear on the tab so for that we added the icon file we updated uh, maybe a little bit of update was done to the 404 page so we did that what else uh, and we uploaded all the images so you see every talk has a image associated with that so we uploaded all that stuff so are we in a position to deploy this app so let's take a look we we'll go to workspace and we'll go to engineers day we'll say firebase so we have the command there firebase emulators so there are and i'll show you the so we have a readme here i'll open the other file which is the temp file which i had okay this one you don't want to you you can pass other options suppose in your project you have configured many things beyond the database and hosting suppose you have configured you know authentication and uh, other uh, features of firebase but when you do your emulation you want to emulate only database and hosting so you can give this sort of a command firebase emulator start dash dash only database comma hosting so let's see uh, what this does to uh, to our app so okay we have got our app the ports are same local host 5000 database 9000 and emulator ui so database is not important because as i showed you earlier our app is using all static data at this point so we'll go to local host 5000 you already have that here okay we don't have it okay this one local host 5000 so you see this is our app and it is displaying properly okay and uh, so whatever we coded uh, uh, it is appearing here and but let's look at the console are we getting the same errors as before that is also important so we are getting firebase no firebase app has been created call okay something has changed so uh, yeah so what has happened is so i i was not getting this error earlier what has happened is here in main.js we are adding all this i'll show you what is happening uh, let's go to index.html so in, so remember this error is very different from the error we saw earlier so in this error we are loading main.js as we load at the end of the html so the reason for uh, for that is we want the dom to be ready and within main.js we add a event listener only when the dom is ready let us run this function so this is the extra thing that we are doing but to run this you know uh, the fire firebase sdk should be loaded so what is happening here is there is some delay issue 
and that is the reason this is not loading as expected. So this is deferring and so forth. So I am suspecting this is the reason why it is not loading. So we will just give it a try. We will not defer these loadings and later on we can also We can also include a delay before we run main.js. So that is also something that we could do. So let's run this. So still we are getting this error. Uh, because of time constraint, we will not be able to solve this now. But uh, I just want to try one more thing before we move on. Yeah, this I am not so familiar to make a quick change here. If it is jQuery, I would have done it. So what? Yeah, I don't want to experiment uh, at this point, but so, uh, I just want to uh, say that. Uh, let's go back to this code. So the reason for the error is, as I explained, this is loading before. The other JavaScript files are ready. So that is why we are not able to uh, create the app. Let's move on to the next bit. So what I wanted to show was here the data is all hard coded. So in the next uh, bit of code, we are going to move to the next version, which is 0 0.5 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.4.1. Where uh, data will not, no longer be in the so let's look at the index.html plotting. You have local changes. What is the change that we did? Oh yeah, we did a defer. Yeah, so we can't check out like this. So we will check out this first. So now we'll check out 041. Now let's look at our HTML. You see uh, all the hard coded data is gone. Where has it gone? We are moving everything to a JSON file. Or rather we are moving it to a database. So everything is in a JSON file here. From here we will import it into a database. So let's load this. Uh, I don't think this will work because already we are having an error loading the app. But let's load this and find out what is happening. So now you see our data is empty. And what is the console error? So we are still getting the same error message. So this demo will not work. But typically what will happen is. We will open the. Local host. I think if I remember correctly, the port was 4000. So this is our emulator UI. So among all the emulators, we have the hosting emulator, which is running at 5000 and the database emulator. So let's go to the database. And in our database emulator, so this is uh, it is saying production default RTDB. Okay, the reason for that is we have two databases, uh, two projects in the same workspace. So here we can import import. And now, you know, the all, all the talks that we have scheduled like 15 talks 0 to 14 and all that data is now imported into the database. So this is a, like a NoSQL database. We are simply importing a, a JSON file and because it is NoSQL, you don't have the power of a, a rela relational database like MySQL, but that is not something we require uh, for the simple app. So we have this. So typically, uh, now let's look at the code, how this is actually processed. So we go back to main.js. So we initialize the app. When the DOM is ready, it adds an event listener. So the uh, purpose of this event listener is to take registrations. So when somebody registers, so they will submit their email address and register. Then this code will 
come in and it so this is the code that's going to run and it will call this function save function which is over here what it does is it creates a in, uh, gets the database handle gets reference to registrations so remember your database has two things one is it is holding talks which is the talks which are scheduled plus one more item which is registrations so that item will get created when the first registration comes in so that is this part and because it's a list to that reference it will push in a new email address which the user has supplied so user enters the email address it comes here and it uh, register uh, saves it to the database if there is an error you will get this on the console if there is no error data saved successfully okay so this is uh, what we have um, handle save so some extra processing uh, so for example uh, you know you will you may want to reset that is going back here uh, after the user has typed reset this and then uh, don't display this and then give a message you are registered so uh, now question for you guys uh, how could how can we improve this message so what i realized later is uh, so the initially when people used to register this was the message that, that was shown to them and uh, maybe they didn't read the message or they didn't interpret this i think people were expecting an email so they ended up uh, registering again they thought probably their registration didn't go through so later on i changed this message to make it more explicit you are registered you will get an email closer to the date of the event so the message was made more explicit so that again relates to more to the ux you know you have to imp keep improving your app based on some data about how users are using your app so that was a minor thing that happened at a later point next thing is about the database rules if you remember correctly initially our rules were uh, you know false and false that would not work in this case because now we are writing registrations into the database plus we are reading information about the talks we are also reading information about what are the talks which are scheduled so both have to be true but we will see later on that this is actually not a good thing to do can anybody guess why this database rule is actually quite bad right now both of these are true and true we can also see in our emulator does it show here it doesn't show here but in the live system it will show in the emulator it doesn't show so what could be the reason why these rules are not good this obviously uh, for this to work we need to be able to read and write we are writing to registrations we are reading from talks mm -hmm. these are generic rules shouldn't we design specific ones specific in what sense task specific user specific user specific will be too much no we don't have registered users we don't want people to register uh yes. like authenticate that is through gmail or we want to keep the registration as simple as possible yes yeah your uh, your answer is correct but i'm just trying to lead to a more specific answer when you say specific exactly what you mean specific we can't be user specific because we don't want to authenticate users anybody can register its uh, yes Adi, in fact, people can, can register twice we don't have any checks in place at this point yeah uh, read can be admin read, read can be admin but uh, there is no concept of admin because uh, like i said there is no authentication on the system mm. right we are not authenticating any anybody anyone can come and type in an email address and register mm -hmm. there is no authentication happening rest of the content is static right the database is involved only in case of uh, registration uh, this is only pertaining to uh, no not only registrations so we are coming closer to the answer but also talks 
This is also being read from the database. Remember that we replaced the static content with dy dynamic content. Now okay. our dot HTML doesn't have any content. I didn't show you that code, but if you go down, there is one more connection to the database. It gets this handle and goes to the talks. Hmm. And then it get processes each talk. Hmm. And after that, it pushes it into the table. So our HTML here is an empty table. The body is empty, as you can see here. Hmm. T body ID is equal to talks. But then here, once it gets the data from the database, so this is all client side driven. Client is connecting to the database, getting the data, and then pushing the rows into the table. Mm -hmm. So now uh, the answer is like this. I will say uh, the so this is one of the like beginners will make this mistake of misconfiguring their database rules. So what happens is I have given full write access, which means that somebody who is smart enough they can write into the talks table. So the write is supposed to be only for registrations, right? But what if the user goes and overwrites all the talks? He can actually wipe out all the talks. Yeah. Because I have given full access. So what we really want is, as uh, Ramanathan said, we have to be a little bit more specific. We want to give read-only access to talks, but write access to registrations. Are you clear now? Yes. So this is live system I am showing, but even that is not enough. Like I said, we have to give read only access to talks, but write access to registrations. My second statement is again not uh, good enough. Giving a write access to registration is again problematic. What if some smart guy comes who is a good hacker, he overwrites the entire registration. That means all these registrations will be wiped out. So we want to be again a little bit more specific and we want to say that he can only append to the registrations. He cannot overwrite the existing registrations. So these kind of uh, very specific rules can be created with, with this kind of a JSON file. So we will see those rules uh, you know, shortly. Uh, in fact, I can show you that now. So that is part of this checkout. Yeah, it is updated. So let's go back to the code. So this is the kind of rules we want. So you can see talks. Reading is true, writing is false. But when it comes to registration, I am saying with specific to one particular entry. That is, you can basically it means that the, uh, the semantics is that you can append, but you cannot go and delete some, the entire registrations. So although you have write access, you can only append. That, that's what this means. And once you register, you can't even read. For example, you cannot read how many people have registered. You cannot read who are the other people who have registered. So all that is not possible. So this is for this particular application. This is the kind of rules that we need. So is it clear? So this is about database rules. Now let's look at the code. Uh, uh, the code is more or less same, like what I showed you earlier. So what we have in the code is uh, the registration is more or less same. Uh, probably one more thing is added, which is validating the email, whether the user is entering the correct email address. Uh, that is at least syntactically, whether it is correct. Then in terms of, uh, like I said earlier, you know, now the message is a little bit more explicit. You will get an email closer to the start of each talk. And then there is a, uh, some sort of a timer uh, computation going on. So even if you look at the live system, when a talk is going live, you will get this sort of thing. That means let's say it starts at 4, up till 5 p.m. you will get this sort of a thing. Now if I refresh, what will happen? So now if I refresh, the talk has already ended. Can you see it has disappeared? It is only showing future talks. So this logic is now built into the JavaScript file. So it is keeping track of the current time 
and the scheduled time of the talk. So for a future talk, it will show, you know, for example, this is on Tuesday, it says starts in two days. Whereas for this one, no venue is provided. So that is why it is not showing anything. But I, so what I do, I go to the talks. So let's say talk number 13, there is a venue configured. Whereas the last talk, no venue is configured. So that is why it is not showing here. But once we create the, you know, event handle in Microsoft Teams, we will go and fill up this venue with the complete URL with the Teams handle. Then this will appear here. And the JavaScript will compute how many days to the meeting. So that logic is built into the JavaScript here. So now I will pause for any questions. So we have actually come to the end of the app. Uh, so I have explained the code a little bit. Uh, the demo did not go through, but don't worry about it. If you have questions, uh, when you try out this report, get in touch with me. I will probably update this code later, like uh, later today, to make it more robust. So obviously, when I first tried it a uh, few days back, it worked. Today, it did not work. Uh, but as you can see, the live system is still working. So the main issue here is uh, one of timing. In the live system, everything is happening through CDN, so it is probably very fast. But uh, we should not rely on that. Uh, we have to make our code more robust. So what I'm going to do is simply add a delay before executing this code. And it will after that, it will work for sure. So that change will happen by end of the day. Now I will pause for questions. Uh, I have to show you one more bit of thing, uh, one more uh, bit of uh, code. But uh, if there are questions, uh, that will be low priority. I'll take the questions first. This granting permissions to the database. Is there any if you have given true true uh, for read and write holistically or globally? How will somebody get access to the data just because because they will need lot more credentials, right, to get access to the data. Yeah, I had the same question, and uh, the thing is, uh, for example, here, if you look at this particular app, uh, we, there are no credentials here. It is simply using the SDK and connecting. Mm -hmm. Like there are no keys, there are no secret keys or API keys or anything like that in this in these JavaScript files or even in the index.html. No such thing is there. Everything is very generic. But the point is this file is deployed on our own, so on our own, uh, on the, like on our own app. So JavaScript yes. has this thing like you cannot do uh, cross-site scripting. There are some security features where you cannot run a script from another domain. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how will somebody hack into this? They cannot do that unless they get hold of uh, the Google infrastructure where this particular app is hosted. So yes. that is my interpretation because otherwise they will not be able to make this sort of a call. See, they can very well create this JavaScript and try to execute this. But Firebase will see that this is uh, not this request is not coming from the referrer is not from the same domain. It is coming yeah. from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So because of those uh, protections, it will not go through. That is my interpretation. But having said that, uh, you know, it's possible that there is another app within the same server or something like that. And that app is under the control of another person in your organization. So there are other scenarios where possibly such a request could come from the same server. So in those cases, it's better to have those rules within the database. OK. OK, it's. And it's uh, you know, it's always better to be very restrictive because uh, you don't know what kind of hackers are out there. They are smart, so they will find a way how to. You know, okay. overcome some uh, loophole somewhere. So the best way to protect your data is uh, having these rules, uh, you know, at the entry point of the database. Uh, OK, as a best rather practice. than relying in on some sort of uh, feature that JavaScript provides or browsers provide. 
Okay, thanks. Any other question? Okay, now uh, having covered all this, now I want to touch upon, since there are no questions, I want to touch upon the other aspect. Uh, so for, uh, so all that we have shown uh, right now is we started with uh, providing static content where all the talks, you know, they were all statically displayed. And when users registered, you know, that was of course dynamic. When users registered, you know, the registration was saved into the database. Then later we felt that that is not a great uh, way to do things, provi providing static content in the HTML. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but uh, you know, uh, it's better to keep your data separate from the uh, actual HTML. So we moved all the talks related stuff into the database. And then we introduced, uh, you know, in our JavaScript, we introduced a lot of logic to uh, read from the database. So that is what we are doing here and pushing it into the HTML as a table row. So this bit we did, uh, you know, in our app, but mind you, all this is client side processing. Nothing is happening on the server side. Server is of course giving you the files, but server is not doing any processing. So what if your app is a little bit more complex and you need to do server side processing? What do you do in that particular case? So for this, we have another bit of code. So to enable that code, you check out the main branch. So now we are on the main branch and we will see how, uh, you know, server side is done here. Now let's go to the public. Notice that suddenly your index.html is gone missing. Right, index.html, which was a static page, and from earlier example, using client side rendering, we were injecting rows into the index.html, rather in the on the client side of things. Now index.html is, itself is missing. Instead, we have a new folder called functions, and inside functions we have index.js. So now what we are doing is for server side computation. We are using Node.js on the server side. And this is what uh, Firebase provides. Firebase is providing us with one more thing called functions. We can also see it here. Let's see it here itself. So this is our Firebase dashboard. Oops. So we were looking at, uh, let's look at engineer's day itself. So this is our dashboard. So here, uh, this is project overview, uh, project settings, authentication, Firebase store, real-time database. This is what we have been looking at so far. Real-time database where we have all the registrations and then the talks. Then storage, hosting. So we are also doing the hosting. So this is what we have. And the hosting has a dashboard. So it says, you know, I'm using a custom domain and it's connected. And uh, this is the last time I deployed. So September 4th, I deployed it and uh, any further deployments, no. So this was the last time I deployed. And I have uh, deployed 23 files for this particular app. So what we want to look at is functions. So functions is a feature in Firebase which enables you to do server side rendering that means all the rendering will happen on the server side so how does it work so our main.js let's go back to the main.js now main.js will now be a little simpler see main.js all the code that it has is pertaining to registration when a user enters email that email is pushed to the database but there is nothing for reading from the database and populating the view with the scheduled talks because now all that is pushed to node.js which is on the server side which is now here in index.js so if you see index.js 
the same code which we were, which we were previously running on the client side i have copied it to the server side so this is one of the kind of beauty of javascript right if you are familiar with javascript you can reuse the code both in the server side and the client side so maybe you are uh, you know deploying earlier developed and deployed this app as client side then later for some reason you decided to move it move it to server side all i had to do was cut the code from here paste it into index.js and run it on the server side so uh, yeah so i just wanted to highlight why people prefer javascript because they can reuse code or refactor code this way uh, by moving it to, uh, between client and server so same code we are instead of running it on the client now we are running it on the server side of things and uh, you know we have a handle on request so now when you get a request it is redirected so this is url routing it is re redirected to uh, express dot probably i used express to initialize it so let's look at uh, package dot json so what are the dependencies here so emulators uh, scripts that are those are scripts dependencies firebase functions so firebase functions i think internally it uses express and that is what i'm uh, sorry it doesn't use express uh, so i'm using uh, firebase functions directly but you can use express.js there is no requirement that you should use uh, firebase functions but we are using firebase functions but internally uh, you know there is a dependency between firebase functions and uh, express so uh, you know the, it gets redirected and uh, i do the processing here on the server side of things and the output that we were doing earlier on the client now we are doing it here that's the difference okay so that's why we don't have an index.html rather we have index.js so this is the server side of things uh, database rules don't change here they should not change okay this i uh, okay where is the database rules yeah so i use the old database rules but obviously in the other code i showed you the updated database rules so we have come to the end of the session any questions at this point so i will show you the uh, url for the code uh, where is it okay it's not saved here pdr org on github and uh, engineers day 2021 so this is where the code is and uh, you can fork it or you can take a clone it locally and i will be updating this code later today any questions participants can unmute themselves they all have mics enabled okay okay any leads any uh, you know uh, tutorials available because there will be we, need, we the developer may need more help in building this yeah this is only the starting point so this is sort of a tutorial how to get started where we showed uh, how to start with a static content and then move it to database beyond that if you search uh, you will get i'm sure you will get lot of tutorials okay uh, yeah, you can start by reading uh, this article on firebase but on devopedia this has good uh, information one thing you may uh, I, i want to point out is that uh, the google uh, not google firebase functions that i showed you just now for uh, server side rendering that is not free because uh, for for that you have to supply your credit card information because that uses google cloud infrastructure hmm right uh, so you can uh, however having said that the repo i showed you you can run this code locally in your local emulator you can run it that is not an issue but you hmm. cannot deploy it because when you try to deploy that code on uh, firebase infrastructure it will say that uh, you don't have the 
your current uh, pricing plan or your firebase plan doesn't allow it so you have to upgrade to a higher plan and for that you have to give your credit card information to google okay did it yeah. cost thing for you to uh, deploy this engineers day page no for engineers day uh, here we are doing everything on the client side we are not using server side rendering okay only that is the code i showed you first we spend most of the time there okay so we are not using server side here we are not using uh, firebase functions hmm. so everything is done on the client side but, but uh, point to notice uh, yeah for uh, firebase functions you need to supply your credit card but even after supplying your credit card you may get a free tier so they may not charge your card uh, but uh, yeah you have to be watchful uh, see how much uh, traffic is coming to your firebase app yeah. the second thing is uh, google uh, so firebase functions is limited to a node js app which is what i showed you here so this is a node js app this is not ideal for many developers so suppose i am coming from python background i may want to deploy a flask app or a django app or maybe scala or some other language right yeah so what app options i have in those cases so for that uh, here we have some information so for that more recently so cloud functions for firebase uh, so this is what uh, happened in march 2017 but in april 2019 google launched another service called cloud run cloud run service so what this service does is it basically uh, uh, runs your app inside a docker container and probably it is uh, orchestrated by kubernetes but that is all internal to uh, google cloud infrastructure what mm -hmm. you need to do is uh, you know provide your app in such a way that it can be dockerized and it can respond to http calls on a certain port that is what is required so uh, what is that uh, yeah that is what is described here so now with google's cloud run service you can develop your app in any language of your choice and uh, run it on the google infrastructure and it will run within a docker image but the thing is you don't have to mess with vms and mess with kubernetes and all that stuff everything is taken care for you by firebase your app is going to interact only through firebase and uh, that is to say your clients they are going to interact through firebase and firebase you know will uh, call the right uh, cloud run service and get back the responses and forward it to the clients so still you have the you know luxury of not doing uh, heavy deployments on the server side of things okay yeah because typically when people say you know uh, okay uh, i have now to I, i am now required to deploy my app on the google cloud then it becomes like a big thing for beginners like they have to know vms and uh, they have to know about learn about containers and learn about uh, you know kubernetes and a lot of stuff they may or may not use it at least they have to be familiar but here everything is transparent to the user you just have to uh, enable this cloud run service and uh, obviously it may not be free and you will be built accordingly but configuration wise it becomes a lot simpler for the uh, developer not it yeah now you, you may ask you know all this sounds very good what is the catch the catch is cost and it depends on the nature of your app you know if the if your app is go, growing so quickly and you are monetizing your app directly from the users you may not care so much about cost uh, you know the amount you pay to google for their infrastructure because uh, for you the speed of deployment is much more uh, important so you are making a lot of uh, tons of money from your users so you don't mind paying google for their infrastructure but for uh, you know uh, average mortals like most of us who are in startups we are not seeing that kind of uh, stellar growth so in those cases you know the cost may hit us 
so where firebase uh, may prove uh, difficult is that for uh, when you are starting off you know the cost may be well within the free tier that they provide but when your app starts scaling then it becomes a little bit more difficult right uh, so that's why here you know there is a statement here when you scale the cost of using firebase will be higher than adopting a platform as a service so if you can uh, let's say google app engine you adopt or some other platform as a service or for that matter even infrastructure as a service you simply take a vm and you build everything yourself then of course you know the cost of operation comes down so it all depends you know how big is your app how many people are using how are you currently monetizing it and does it make sense for you to continue with firebase the other criticism with firebase is it's not open source it is uh, controlled although it is popular it is controlled by google what if one day suddenly google decides i want to deprecate firebase i want to retire it then all the developers all the apps that are using firebase will be left in the lurch so they have to quickly you know migrate to some other platform so that is another uh, you know criticism but surely google will give some time like they are not going to do it overnight they will give time maybe one year two years for people to migrate but still you know that is one of the criticisms of firebase thanks that was informative yeah arjun any competition for firebase competition uh, i am not aware uh, too much about that uh, there could be uh, i think uh, yeah i think there are because you know when i was editing this article i created this item here the see also backend as a service and the reason i created this is uh, because when i was doing the research i found that there are many alternatives to firebase so i wanted to put that as a separate article and that is the reason i created this so there are alternatives although i am not familiar what are those but those will be described in this particular article when we get down to writing it so uh, you know i myself am quite new to firebase uh, i developed uh, one simple app on firebase maybe 3 4 years back uh, some of you may recall uh, arjun and uh, ramanathan remember we had an event at uh, microsoft uh, with for iot where uh, using raspberry pi and a camera we asked the participants to take a picture yeah then the picture was uploaded immediately to firebase and then on the on a open web page it in the photos used to refresh automatically do you recall that yes i recall it it's in the yeah. old madras.google office yeah not google office it was in microsoft when they were still there in uh, egl okay okay so this was quite uh, i think you're talking time. about the android things one no yeah yeah android things yeah but it was not in google office it was in microsoft office as part of our iot project day so at that time the app side of things was developed using uh, android and uh, yeah and there you know the uh, image objects were pushed to firebase so that code was not uh, i mean uh, it was uh, open source code uh, already available i think it was available from i don't know where i picked up that code but uh, you know that was the first project i did but i did not learn much there because i did not, did not tinker much with that code but when i was looking for a way to take registrations then i got the idea why not build a simple app with firebase so this was the like uh, the most that i have built using firebase and for the sake of experiment and demo i tried both the things both server side rendering as well as client side rendering which i thought will be useful as a demo for beginners so any other questions uh, so uh, very few people on the call today sanjeev any question
okay if not we'll uh, sign off here and uh, we'll meet at the next talk uh, which is on tuesday yeah That's sorry uh, i mean i was away actually i missed most of the presentation so this would be yeah. on uh, youtube or something yeah the recording will be uploaded to youtube okay. yes okay okay i'll catch up with you later i sorry sure, I, sure. most of the things uh, i it was on mute so yeah okay okay so uh, yeah thanks everyone for joining uh, although it's a sunday afternoon uh, thanks for taking your time and joining this session the video will be available on youtube yeah thank you so thank the you. next talk as part of the series is on tuesday uh, that is on uh, google product called looker which is a uh, like uh, data analytics uh, platform by google probably it's like uh, equivalent of power bi that microsoft offers so uh, yeah if you are interested in that uh, space uh, you know uh, join us at 7 pm on tuesday okay uh, one quick thing that uh, i i just recalled we were discussing about the credit card and something right the for the firebase it requires some credit card for server side running something like that you were discussing yes because uh, the server side the functional functionality is uh, using google cloud infrastructure okay so in that case i was wondering if you instead of hosting that uh, on the google uh, side uh, this thing is it uh, possible to host into a private cloud like open stack or something in that case do the scenario changes private cloud let me think uh, uh, yeah then it comes down to almost like this see uh, then you are not benefiting from the power of uh, the firebase ecosystem and its integration with uh, google cloud but what you are doing is falling back on a model like this see i am opening up this you are trying to fall back on a model like this where you are using firebase but for some functionality you know you are using a private cloud so it could be this model also no it, right. uh, yeah it could be this model uh, but typically i think it will be this model let's say you know if it's a private cloud it may not integrate properly with firebase in this case so you can use this model where you know your clients for some functionality they contact firebase maybe some things you don't want to do there you want to do it in a private cloud then you know you, your apps will talk to the private cloud accordingly correct so this is what was happening in another scenario so uh, instead of pri private cloud we were using aws okay okay yeah so this is perfectly possible yeah mm -hmm. so in that case i remember those guys have not used the credit card details they face the same issue i guess no why would they face the same issue because see they they will face the issue only if they are going to this route see mm. suppose their aws is here and mm. they are using firebase to, trying to contact aws that mm. will not work because you are still going through the firebase ecosystem to reach aws right what we are saying is the client has to directly contact aws not through firebase correct that is what is happening in our scenario right yeah. okay so in this case i don't expect any problem you don't need any credit card because you are directly in touch with the aws correct correct, correct. firebase okay. may not even know that you are in contact with another server clients are in contact with another server correct so drawback was i think data repositories were a little bit out of sync because uh, in the aws uh, mysql uh, dumps were there and they were using metabase and all those things so yeah. statistics in the firebase was little bit out of sync than what the actual data was in aws yeah yeah so i understand what, where you are coming from see in one particular deployment scenario let's look at this all your data is in firebase this is the infrastructure you are using for some functionality you want to contact aws right right but problem right. here is to contact aws how will you contact aws you have to run something at firebase right correct because there is a dyna dynamism involved here it is no longer static mm. so firebase right. has to figure out that for some functionality first it has to figure out that uh, you know i am not uh, asking to read database rather i am going to execute something given that execute that execution may be very trivial just uh, one http call to aws but even that is a small execution on the firebase side of things 
which means that you need google uh, firebase functions feature right right any execution on the server side of things you need that uh, firebase feature correct correct so you have to supply the credit card information hmm yeah so that is the limitation so as i think uh, uh, ramanathan or arjun were asking uh, if you look at for the alternatives of firebase that might be some interesting use case so instead of use firebase what else we can use yeah yeah sure but uh, let's keep this in mind uh, it's mostly indian developers who think like this in my opinion yeah, true true <laughs> right they are always thinking of cost first but correct like i made the point earlier if your app is making money you don't really ca- care so much about the infrastructure cost if it is manageable within your profit loss statement true 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 very true if you are making 100 uh, you don't mind paying uh, 10 dollars to google correct because it saves me so much time hiring uh, developers for back end management true right so thank you instead of hiring two developers to take care of back end or three or four developers to take care of back end i can do with one guy who manages all the firebase related stuff true got your point thanks arvin